<laughs> well, hey, everybody. It is old HRK here, everybody's favorite bartender. And it is time for another episode of The Perfect Drink, where we believe that there is a perfect drink for any occasion, even inadvertently licking cocaine out of someone's back door. Let's go. The Perfect Drink. The Perfect Drink. The Perfect Drink. The Perfect Drink. The Perfect Drink is a podcast that combines amazing cocktails with the kind of infinite wisdom that can only come from a lifetime of poor decisions. So take a journey with everybody's favorite bartender. We can make some drinks, have some laughs, and who knows, you might even learn a thing or two. See you soon. All right. Uh, This is normally where I'd say, well, hey, everybody, but we did a little switch up today. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Uh, Big news on the perfect drink. We fucking cracked the top 50 last week in United States comedy podcasts. So that's fucking awesome. Uh, Immediately, my head went to dollar signs and I started emailing every fucking company in the world being like, hey, I'm in the top 50. You want to fucking sponsor the show? Heard back from zero people. (laughs) I think as long as they don't watch. I feel like as long as they don't watch, they'll be like, yeah, we'll sponsor you. (laughs) Once they see me say 9-11 is the best thing that ever happened to firemen, they'll probably be like, "Eh, I don't fucking know. (laughs) Uh, HRK Hang and Bang update. We've got two fucking comments. So right now, uh, I'm probably just going to call it a draw and invite them both. Um, I think one of them lived in, like, New Jersey or something. But uh, listen, man, if you're watching, put a comment on the fucking YouTube. Go to to YouTube. Go to the channel, uh, The Perfect Drink Podcast, and put a comment in the episode for a chance to hang out all night for free drinks and watch Willard Wilcox fucking jam out at a show. So it'll be awesome. Uh, Last week, I was in the doghouse. I have made it out of the doghouse. But uh, in between now and then, I was in the doghouse twice. (laughs) I got out, in, out, in, out. (laughs) Uh, but, uh, you know, whatever, uh, yeah, it, 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 nothing too crazy. Just, you know, just my, minor things. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hang around as long. It was the late, great Edgar Allan Poe, I believe, who said, I will hang around as long as you will let me. Edgar Allan, it was David Allen Coe, my mistake. Music reference. David Allen Coe, fucking A. I saw fucking David Allen Coe in concert. I, this is not, I did not plan to talk about this, but fucking... David Allen Coe, I saw him at the Silver Slipper in Ottawa. It's a, it's, a, it's a strip club. But when I was, like, in college, this is 20 fucking 23 years ago or something. And uh, he, he was, like, f- first of all, fucking uh, uh, the Turnpike Troubadours opened for him, and they were fucking awesome. And, that, and I, didn't, you know, I didn't know who they were at the time because it was so goddamn long ago. And I think it was them. I could be wrong. I was drunk. But he was, like, fucking an hour and a half late. He came, I, word has he was at the casino all day, just like fucking gambling his balls off. Shows up an hour and a half late, puts on his Britney Spears headset, looks like, like he's got like Undertaker face, like where Undertaker's eyes are like dark and he, whatever. He just looked like, it was, it looked like fucking Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> like they just like strung him up, you know? They put a guitar player on each side and his hands were tied to their hands. Like he barely fucking moved. He sang like, he, he did like a medley. You know what I mean? Like he did all of his songs in medley form. It was he played for about thirty minutes and played like fucking fifteen songs nonstop, just one to the next, to the next, to the next. And uh, it was fucking awesome. So David Allen Coe, if you're listening, he might not even be alive anymore. I don't fucking know. Uh, but if you're listening and you want to come on the show, you can hang around as long as I will let you. Uh, had Gabe's uh, old GSJ at his wedding this weekend. Fucking Gabe got married, man. Fucking. It seems like yesterday. Me and Gabe started Two Guys in Tequila, which was a podcast we did. We did five episodes, and then life happened and whatever. But, uh, but uh, he, I don't even, I, when we first started the podcast, he and his beautiful wife were not even dating yet. And then, uh, so he's my best buddy, and then we introduced him to one of Ashley's best girlfriends, and now they're fucking married. So that's funny how that happens. Um, had a great time at the wedding. It's basically what got me out of the doghouse. Um, I, I made a real fucking concentrated effort to not get shit faced (laughs) because I was like one day out of the doghouse I was like I can't fuck this up you know what I mean we get to the wedding actually we didn't get to the wedding and that's the story we were at the hotel whatever hanging out we go downstairs to the to the hotel bar and there's a huge group of people there there's like three buses parked outside and we know that there's a bus that is taking us from the hotel to the wedding which is two blocks away we could easily walk but they got a chart uh they got a, a bus 
So there's a huge group of people in the fucking lobby. They all start loading on these buses, and me and Ashley, and then two other couples that are that are friends with Ashley and and, and the bride. Uh, we all get on the bus, <laughs> and the one girl swears up and down. She asked the bus driver, "Is this going to the Selena's wedding?" And the guy said, "Yes." I would bet if I had to that she said something like, "Is this going to the Selena's wedding?" And he said something like, "The buses are all going to the same wedding." You know what I mean? She's probably like, "Is this bus going to blah blah?" And he's like, "Yeah, they're all going to the same spot." We get on the bus. The bus drives a block, and then it drives another block, and then it, and, and this hotel's right by the fucking highway, and, uh, and then it gets on the highway. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, we shouldn't be on the highway. Now, me and Ashley are in the front seat, so I just leaned over to the, the bus driver, and I was like, hey, where are we going, bud? <laughs> he said, Elburn, Illinois. We were in Naperville, so that's like a 28-minute ride. Now, at this point, um, at this point, we know that we're going to miss the, well, I know that we're going to miss the wedding. Um, I think that some of the other girls were still hopefully could make it. But so I got on Uber and I got a couple cars, which let me just say that that day was like, I never have money in my bank account because I'm all cash because I'm a bartender. But that day was like payday. So I had like, you know, I get my, I'm payday every two weeks from the bar. I get like 200 bucks. And then like my money is cash, you know? So I had like fucking $180 in my bank account on my, on my debit card. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just fucking order these Ubers. So I ordered two Ubers. Well, actually, maybe I should order one. Any fucking ways, whatever. But I get the Uber. My point is, of all the people there <laughs> in the group that fucked up, I'm the last one that should be ordering this fucking Uber. But there I am, like a horse's ass, ordering the Uber. So we get to the fucking, uh, we get to the wrong wedding. <laughs> and the one Uber's like five minutes away. We let the other couples jump in that. Me and Ashley wait for the second Uber. We jump in that. And we miss uh, my best friend's wedding. I was not, he didn't have a, 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 they didn't have bride and groom parties. So, you know what I mean? It wasn't that big of a deal. But anyways, um, yeah, stayed sober most. I didn't start drinking till, till like cocktail hour, which for me, I'm telling you, is a big deal. It's funny, uh. It's funny, like you try, like I stayed sober, <laughs> like I, like I didn't get all tuned up, so that Ashley would, you know, stay in her good graces. And then by fucking eight o'clock, well, ten o'clock, I don't fucking know. She's like slurring her words and falling out of her chair, and I'm just sitting there, like holding her purse, like this is fucking dumb. So, you know, I don't know. There's no, there's no. <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I mean? One of us is gonna get tuned up, and uh, at least when it's her, I'm not in trouble. So. That's uh, that's that. I've already been talking too much about that. Uh, this fucking Johnny Depp trial, bro, huh? <laughs> it's like there is crazy shit happening all over the world, and all we care about is fucking Johnny Depp. Uh, but, ha dude, how funny is Johnny Depp, Will? He's fucking hilarious. You never would know. You know what I mean? Just because, you know, whatever. I don't know. He, but he's like a smart hilarious guy uh so I, I i mean i always liked all of his movies but now he's i'm like his biggest fan this guy's a fucking animal and i love i've been saying it for a while like like with equal rights you know you bitches want you want equal rights that's fine but the chickens are fucking coming home to roost dude you know the gig is up on you ladies you want you wanted so you wanted so much equality that now you're fucked because we are suing you for abuse and i fucking love it because I have been in abusive relationships, not really, just toxic relationships. The thing is, she probably wasn't even, I mean, she did cut his fucking hand off, but um, like, she's probably not any more abusive than he was. They were probably just both a couple fucking assholes who were, you know, living a rock and roll lifestyle of drugs and alcohol and uh, fought all the time. But you can tell that she was a real fucking loony, man. She, <laughs> you see her take the fucking bump in the fucking courtroom. <laughs> The fucking balls on this lady. She gets her water bottle and like switches the water and pours the water. It's like you're you're drunk and high in court, lady. But uh, yeah, man, you know you 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 bitches had it just you had it just right where it was like the perfect it was the perfect um, distribution or balance rather between like between like uh, equality and chivalry, right? Like you still we still had to like. We still had to, like, hold the door for you. You know what I mean? We just couldn't look at your ass as you walked by. Like, you, you guys were, you know, we still had to pay for dinner, but you didn't have to put out. You guys were doing fucking great. And then you wanted so much fucking equality that now you can be abusive. I love it. I love it. And my favorite is the women that are, like, on her side. <laughs> I, I, I follow a Facebook page that's, like, 
women or people for Amber Heard or whatever the fuck. And uh, all the comments are just dudes fucking trashing her. And this lady's like trying to block everybody and there's too many. I love it. I don't know. I fucking, I love it. Yeah, buckle up, ladies. You, you got to start fucking building roads pretty soon. Let me know how that works for you, you know? Fucking dummies. Uh, gonna do a little segment of tip from the bartender. This is inspired by a story, but it happens all the fucking time. And the tip from the bartender this week is, uh, I know I don't do this all the time, but I've done it before. Tip from the bartender. Every time there's a table and one guy at the table or a girl, but it's usually a guy because we're not quite there yet on the equality. Pretty soon it's going to have to be a girl. One guy always insists on getting the bill. So I got it. I got it. I got it. He makes a big fucking spectacle, right? Every fucking time. $112 bill. And he tips fucking eight bucks. So my tip from the bartender is if you're sitting with a fucking dude who insists on getting the fucking bill, let that dumb motherfucker get the bill. But then you leave the tip and leave a good fucking tip. Because even if you leave $30 on, you know, 85, you still only spent 30 bucks on fucking dinner and drinks, you know? So that's my tip. If you're fucking, if you're with an asshole who insists on getting the bill, leave the tip because I promise he's not going to tip well. Um, what else do I got? Fucking walked to Walmart the other day. <laughs> let me get another beer. I fucking walked to Walmart the other day. Now, you know life is going exactly how you want it to go. If you're walking to fucking Walmart when it's 80, it was one of those hot days last week. It was like 85 at like 10 in the morning. There's like school buses passing me and shit. It was like, they're just looking at me like, who's this fucking old man loser walking? I had like my, my computer bag. Uh, the, the point was I needed to fucking, uh, I, I didn't have, like I said, I'm all cash. I didn't have money. So I had to go like to Walmart and deposit money. And my debit card, and I could fucking Uber where I needed to fucking go. But, uh, any fucking way, so I'm walking to Walmart, and I'm walking by the school where the kids are all getting dropped off, and they're flipping me off and shit. And uh, this fucking Porsche pulls out, and it's a Porsche. Like, it's pretty identifiable. When you see a Porsche, you, like, know that that's something. Even if you're a kid and you don't know what a Porsche is, you know that it's something. You know it's not a fucking normal car. Well, this Porsche said Porsche in giant letters on the side. Now, oh, there's usually a garbage can there. Now, listen, I know that I, uh, having been a walker at this phase of my life with old Red being down, uh, I shouldn't be criticizing anyone's car. But if you got a Porsche, you don't need to put Porsche on the side of the Porsche. Like, we know it's a fucking Porsche, bro. So, um, you know, I don't know. I thought to myself when I saw him, I'd still rather be me. <laughs> Walk, I'd rather be walking to Walmart than driving a Porsche that said Porsche on the side of the Porsche. Uh, got to Walmart, and uh, a lot of, it's amazing to me how many people fucking uh, use rascals that can walk. <laughs> like, if you can walk to the fucking rascal, why, a rascal is those little scooters. Why can't you just walk through fucking Walmart? You get out of your car, you walk to the fucking door, you walk in the door, you get in the rascal, you sit in the rascal, and you're, it's, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not an old person with arthritis every time. Never. Never an old person with arthritis. What it is, is a overweight person who's kind of fucking lazy and uh you know maybe if you'd stop using the rascal you wouldn't need the fucking rascal it's a fucking that's uh what do you call that a double-edged sword the rascal is a double-edged sword <laughs> oh it's like crack it's like crack for fucking lazy fat fucks sorry everybody uh it's breakup season i actually just had a friend that that, that boyfriend broke up with her um but it's Ashley made a post the other day, and she was like, it's blonde season, you know. It's a, she said something about blonde season. And I was like, no, it's breakup season. And that's why it's, that's why it's blonde season, because every time people break up, they go try to get hotter. <laughs> it's so funny. I've talked about it before, so I won't carry on. But, like, when you break up with someone, you're, like, on a mission to make them upset that you're broken you know what i mean like you next time that person sees me i'm gonna be hotter i'm gonna have my shit together a little more blah blah you get a gym membership and it's so funny it's like you know if you did that while you were dating you might not be fucking broken up <laughs> but anyways that's why uh every time ashley breaks up with me i just drink for six days straight um and then uh when she sees me again she's like i know i made the right choice but we always get back together so i don't know thank god because otherwise i'd be drunk for 27 days straight and I'd probably fucking, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, so at the beginning of the show today, I made a reference about uh, inadvertently licking uh, the old cocaine out of some dude's back door. And there is a story. <laughs> and here's the fucking story. Uh, let's, uh, 
Let's call uh, the my, my the show's gonna be a little a little different today, but let's let let's call this ripping shots. Here we go. Ripping shots. Ripping shots. All of my friends are ripping shots. Ripping shots. Ripping shots. Because I'm ripping shots. So today's shot is called liquid cocaine. Now I have a confession to make. We are not making it the right way. Liquid cocaine is like a peppermint schnapps. You know, any version of the zillion peppermint schnapps that are out there. We use Rumpelmints today. Uh, Jägermeister. And then you use uh, like 151 rum. We don't have it at the bar. I got a bottle at home, but I was late today, as fucking always, and running around, and I forgot my bottle. So we're using Captain Morgan. Let's uh, let's put this thing down. Let's tell the cocaine butthole story. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like, uh, I don't know, it tastes like fucking, it tastes like a dead Nazi. Remember the shot dead Nazi from college? Anyways, um, the 151 rum is, is a high... High alcohol content, so that's why it's called liquid cocaine, but uh, we didn't have it, so perfect, because I don't want to get too fucked up today anyways. Anyways, <laughs> I got a friend of a friend, and uh, it's, a, it's a lawyer gal. I do not know this person. I heard the story, you know, third party or whatever, but <laughs> she was, she was, she's, she's seen a new guy, you know, a couple months in or whatever, a couple weeks in, I don't fucking know, and she's, uh, she's, she's engaged in some salad tossing. <laughs> She's just, she's just fucking, just prison style fucking face in there, just going to work on this guy's back door. And, uh, and like a little while later, her face got numb. <laughs> and she couldn't figure out what the fuck her face was numb for. And after some due diligence, research, talking to friends, whatever, she realized that that guy does the cocaine uh via uh, the, the via the back the back he go you know you can go in through the front you can go in through the back he goes in through the back i don't know um i've never done butthole drugs but, but, but uh I, I i don't know maybe it maybe it's faster maybe it works i don't i don't fuck i don't know i don't know shit about it i'm not i'm not much of a drug user i am uh, i'm a I'm, I'm, I know as much about drinking as any human being alive. But as the drugs go, you know, I'm new to the drug game. Just started eating some gummies and that, and it's super fun. But anyways, this guy puts cocaine in his butthole. Lawyer girlfriend eating the butt, and face goes numb. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what this has to do with anything, but I will tell you this. I feel like the type of girl that would eat a guy's butt three weeks into a relationship is the type of girl that should know why her face is numb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like tossing salad and, and butthole cocaine are kind of on the same plane. <laughs> so it's funny to me. Maybe she just started, like, eating ass, and she, maybe she's trying to, like, get more, get more uh, adventurous. I don't know. Uh, but I, I guarantee it's like, it's like maybe there's a progression. Maybe first you start eating ass, and then, you know, you start uh, smoking cigarettes in the school bathroom. And then you start doing cocaine. And then you start doing backdoor cocaine. I don't fucking know. But the point is, this girl, maybe this is what will deter her from, maybe she'll never eat butt again, thus not develop a heroin problem five years down the road because it seems to be the, you know, the trajectory. <laughs> Tossing salad is like a gateway drug. <laughs> It's like how if you work at Hooters, you're probably going to be a stripper someday. Not not indefinitely, but probably. You know, there's a you know Hooters is like Hooters is like the baby step phase of like we're gonna fucking uh, you know be be on the pole someday. Okay, we're at 20 minutes. We're doing just fine. Uh, let's get into. Uh, let me see what else. I make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, let's make this fucking cocktail. There's a there's a story. Um, today's today's. Uh, I know a person that cheated on she's 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 been she's been seeing this guy and he's a real nice guy and she cheated on him with this fucking terrible guy that uh that she also had dated before but like the point is the guy that the the terrible guy just didn't like her you know what I mean now she probably doesn't want to admit that because every time he texts her she comes fucking running but he clearly just doesn't like her that much 
she meets a new guy, going great. The bad guy, of course, texts her. Because those people that are like shitty for you know when, <laughs> when you've met someone, they've got like a spidey sense that goes off in their head and they shoot you a text. How's it going? <laughs> you know what I mean? Next thing you know, you're, at, you're licking cocaine out of their butthole. So fucking, uh, so, she, so she cheated on her real nice guy with this real shit bag. And, uh, and uh, so it was going to be ripping shots, but the way the show went today, whatever, it's going to be the cocktail. But, but I put a question out, and, 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 the, and the thought behind the question is, is it, is it, let me read it how I wrote it. The question is, is it worse to be attracted to someone who's bad for you or not attracted to someone who's great for you? Because her argument was, I'm just not that attracted to the nice guy. So it's like, what's, you know, what's more like poisonous for you, like, being attracted to a person who's the worst fucking person alive or for some reason not being attracted to a person who for all intents and purposes is great. And I don't even mean that, I'm not saying like some, some uh, you know, I'm not saying the, the guy from Mask keeps asking you to prom and you won't fucking go. I mean like a, a, for all intents and purposes a handsome fella, you know what I mean, who you should be attracted to and you're just not. So that was the question. Today's drink is called The Jerk. Let's make the jerk. We're going to, I usually start with alcohol, but we're going to start with ice just because I fucking feel like it. First step in making this drink is not bumping your knee on the rail. Uh, so you're, I don't even know the fucking drink that good. Uh, gold rum, uh, pipes of orange juice. Okay, yeah. So here, here's what we're going to do. You're going to go uh, about an ounce of uh, white rum, an ounce of uh, dark rum. You're going to go a little pineapple juice, a little orange juice, a little dabble, and a little dobble. That's dabble of pineapple, dobble of OJ. And then, uh, oh, some fucking strawberry, strawberry puree. This is a real, real bitch drink, if you will. I don't mean that as in to imply that it's for women, just for uh, men that aren't very tough. Um, we don't have strawberry puree, so I'm using raspberry, but whatever. We're going to get through it. Uh, and, uh, oh, some grenadine. Jesus Christ. It's like all the biggest pussy things in the world are in this drink. They should call this drink the vagina. But, like, then they'd have to change the name in 2023 because by then women will fucking be picking up tabs and shit. I'm going to add a little more ice to it. Okay. You notice the drink isn't quite full, but that's okay because... What we're going to do is shake it and re-pour over fresh ice. Oh, I was not prepared for this at all. Because, uh, you know, I'm fucking dumb as a sack of hammers. But here we go. Let's shake this fucker up. Now, when you shake it, the ice will melt a little bit. So there'll be more, you know, like this glass will be full even though the last glass wasn't, is what I'm trying to say. Let's. Oh, having some trouble here. We're going to pour it over fresh ice. I always say the best drinks are shaken and poured over fresh ice. I just spilled half of it on the bar, so I apologize for that. We got this one shaker that's, like, not as big as the other shakers. Come on, bitch. Okay, now, what makes this drink the jerk? As previously, I had a fucking straw sitting here. Jesus Christ. Will? may have to do a little editing. What makes this drink called the jerk, I'm going to add a little more orange juice so it's full. My prediction of how the glass would be full was wrong. What makes this drink called the jerk is that after you make it, you put the straw in, and then you pour some 151 rum, which as previously stated, I forgot at fucking home, down the straw. We're just going to use regular old Bacardi. We're going to pour it. Never mind, that's not going to work. You're supposed to pour it down the straw hole, but I'm just going to add it to the top. Because <laughs> the, the, look... As holes go, that's not going to fit. See what I mean? It won't fit. It's like a, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> this is the worst podcast of all time. Let's take a drink of the fucking jerk. I feel like a jerk making this fucking drink so poorly. I am a professional. Yeah, it tastes like every fucking rum drink of all time. Anyone who, I fucking hate rum. And I don't think it's a bad it's not my favorite flavor, but I just feel like anyone who orders a rum drink is just like someone who wants a glass of juice, but wants to say that they're drinking. So I don't know. It tastes like a fucking, tastes like fucking lemonade. I don't know. It's dumb. 
But I'll tell you what, if that first uh, if that first hit was just a big fucking straw full of 151, I bet I wouldn't say that. So if you're going to make it right, pour the fucking 151 down the fucking, down the old hole. Much like that guy pours cocaine in his, never mind. Uh, so look, so, so the point is, I asked that question. Now, this would normally be ripping shots, but the way the show was, yada, yada, yada. The cocaine story was, coca- liquid cocaine's a shot, so it worked better to do it this way. Anyways, let's go through these fucking answers. Uh, first of all, how many people were like, I got like 20 responses where people were like, well, if you're not attracted to someone, then, then what's the point? So, the, so it's, you know, the first one's worse. The first one being, you know, attracted to someone who's bad for you, not attracted to someone who's good for you. And they were like, well, if you're not attracted to someone, there's no point. So blah, blah, blah. Yeah, bitch. What I'm saying is if you could magically make yourself, what I wanted to ask originally was what would, what's better? to never be attracted to someone who's bad for you or to always be attracted to people that are good for you. But it was a weird, that just sounds weird, so I did it this way. But so many people misunderstood what the fuck I was saying that it was frustrating. So I got like 100 answers that were like, well, if you're not attracted to the person, there's no point. So the first one, well, right, I'm saying if you could magically be attracted to the person. There were a few answers that made a little bit of sense. So let's read those. First, Dave. David from Naples, Florida. I, what's your full name, Willard? Is it really Willard? Yeah, see, like, um, do you, all your friends call you Will? Yeah, yeah. I feel like if your name is a short name and a long name, like Robert and Bobby, you're Bobby till you're about fucking, you know, whatever, and then you switch to Robert because you want to be taken seriously. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Willard, though, might work in reverse. <laughs> I feel like a, a, a little kid would be like, Willard! But then, you know, you, t- you turn it all and it's like, Will, you know. Um, but any fucking ways. My point is, uh, David from uh, Naples, Florida, I don't take you seriously no matter how many fucking fancy names you use. He says, and I quote, fuck, 15 U's. That's a toughie going with not attracted to someone good for you. Then he does a double space, pop, pop, two lines down. Asterix, asterix, changed my mind. Bop, bop, two more lines down. Attracted to someone bad for you. Been there. They wreck your life. First of all, if you change your mind while you're typing something, you don't have to include that you changed your mind. You can just delete what you previously fucking wrote and then rewrite the fucking thing. That's what's so great about texting, emails, all that shit. You you can think about what you want to say before you fucking hit send. In a conversation, if I say something and I change my mind, I have to be like, no way that I change my mind. But we were not fucking, in fact, David, having a conversation. You were texting or fucking commenting. So my point is, uh, I feel like when you do that, it, it, he just wanted to, like, he just wanted to, like, he knew what he was doing from the beginning is my point. Like, he knew the whole time, and what he wanted to do was talk about how someone wrecked his life. Also, anytime someone says someone wrecked their life, what probably happened is the opposite. <laughs> I'll bet you if I'll bet you if David's girlfriend was here, she'd be like, "No, no, you, no, that's not what happened. You wrecked my fucking life." But uh, that's why I always say that um, I'm such a jerk, and all the girls that I have ever dated were great, because uh, the opposite is true. <laughs> anyway, so that's David's answer. Um, yeah, they, 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 the, the bad people can wreck your life. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put in my two cents later. But, yeah, that was a – I, I see what you did during that answer, David, and uh, it just reeks of fucking manipulativity. And uh, that makes me think that maybe you ruined her life. Ashley from New Lenox, who is my girlfriend, commented second because it can be a real game changer. Now, Ashley was in a real position here, right, because I am terrible for her. <laughs> So she probably had to put a lot of thought into like, how do I want to say this? Because if I say being attracted to someone who's bad for you is worse, then Ryan will be like, well, then I guess we should break up, which I would never, but whatever. And then the second one, you know, <laughs> the, the point is she's right. It could be a real game changer. And that's the point of the question. If you could make yourself attracted to someone who's great for you, the rest of your life would be like, I think we all know someone who like liked us at some point in our life. And for whatever reason, not that they weren't, you know, pretty or handsome, just for whatever reason, you weren't into it. But if you were, you too would have like, you know, you'd have a picket fence by now, you know. So I think that's what she's trying to say by game changer. Like it can really, you know, you, you, can, you can live your best life if you have the right partner. 
So if you could just make yourself be attracted to him. Uh, that said, I am real offended that you didn't just reply, I don't ever think about either of these because I am in love with you. But she did not put that. So now I have to spend the rest of my day letting that stew. Um, and then finally, Pat from Denton, Texas. <laughs> the Texas education system is, is flexing right now. Uh, Pat says, sometime beauty, not Everything's guess. I go for personality and attitude and confidence. Their confidence with himself, then it's okay. I'm not saying unattractive person, but they have to be so attractive. <laughs> I, I read that 15 times trying to decide if she was saying the first one or the second one. <laughs> And got nowhere, uh, no, nowhere. Uh, but fucking Pat, cheers. Cheers to you. Um, now, listen, that said, Pat comments all the time. She's a, she's, a, she's a supporter of the cause, so I should not tease her too hard. But I like to tease everybody. She probably does like voice to text or something like that. Uh, or it's just the Texas education system. Who the fuck knows? But uh, I don't fucking know. I guess, I guess, uh, I, 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 so, 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 real hard to get thoughts together after reading that fucking jumbled mess. Anyways, here's my take on it. It's better, I would rather be attracted to someone that's bad for me. It's, it's better to be attracted to someone that's bad for you than not, like, like if I had to pick which one I wanted, it would be, that I was attracted to someone that's bad for me. And here's why. Because you can change someone who's bad for you. You know what I mean? Like people, everybody's, everybody's example was like, yeah, those people ruin your lives. Those people ruin your lives, blah, 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 blah. Well, why do you keep going back to them? And here's why. Because you hope that they'll get better. You hope that all of the things you love about them will stay the same, but the things you don't like about them will evolve, right? And to act like, I've heard so you know, you hear people talk all the time about how people don't change. People change all the fucking time, dude. When I think about my dad, who like I don't really remember when I was like when he was like 20, you know, 2021. 20, but I remember a little bit, and I mean, I mean he was a wild man, you know what I mean? This dude from 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 when I started like remembering shit about him, right? So like when I was, you know, let's say I was fucking seven. He just worked and came home and did yard work and slept told me he loved me every fucking day, told me not to do drugs, which I diligently obeyed till I was 40 years old and then dabbled in the gummies. But the point is, like, people can change. So when you find that person that's terrible for you, they, they don't have to be terrible for you forever. And that's why I think that's the better one. Because I, I think women especially, I think, see potential. I, mean, I don't think guys see potential. I think guys see ass and titties. I, I pointed high and low and said ass and titties. I meant ass and titties. <laughs> But, like, I think guys, for the most part, it's just about, like, not wanting to punch the person and being physically attracted to them. But women, I think, look at a person, and I think they can see, like, no, this guy has potential, and I can make, I can bring that out of him. You know what I mean? So I think that, you know, I think that's the fucking best way. Being attracted to someone who's good for you, um, if you could make, if you could hypnotize yourself and being attracted to a fucking, you know, uh, bland, let, let's say the person's bland, right? They're still going to fucking be bland, you know? You, you, it, it, like, you know, they probably, they, probably aren't, they probably aren't licking cocaine out of your butthole, I'll tell you that. So I just think the best way is to, I think it's best to be, I think it's better to be attracted to someone who's bad for you because there's always the hope that you can fucking uh, change them. And if you can't, you can always just fucking walk away and find another piece of shit who's terrible for you to ruin your life for the next six to 12 months. With that, this is old HRK signing off, saying, oh, fucking last call for alcohol. Ah! I got to get my shit together. Last call for alcohol. Last call. Take a drink of this stupid. For alcohol. It's so hard to feel tough when you're drinking out of a straw. Um, so to sum things up, number one, uh, if, 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 if you're licking buttholes, just understand that you're about a year away from getting locked up on heroin charges. Number two, if, uh, what else did I talk about today? 
It's better to be attracted to a bad person than not attracted to a good person. And number three, uh, fucking HRK, fucking hanging bang. Put a comment in the fucking video and I'll buy you drinks all night and we will watch fucking the super talented, handsome Willard Wilcox play two in the morning. I'll request it six fucking times. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and don't take care of your mom. That's my job. Thanks for listening to The Perfect Drink. Remember, you can always hear me first on Be Positive Radio every Monday at 1 p.m. If you miss me there, all episodes are available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you might listen to your podcasts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell a friend. If you're interested in being a guest on the show or you just want to tell me how much you like me, feel free to send me an email at hrkpresents at gmail.com or just slide into my DMs like Like your your mom mom does. does. See you next time.